Where are you? It's coming. Out for delivery. Hey, how's it going YouTube? Thanks for tuning in to this unboxing and quick review of the portable battery, the Go Labs R300. Um, I want to mention briefly that I also have a Blue Eddy AC200P, which basically meets more than meets my power needs with uh, three 120 watt solar panels, which I will be reviewing at a later time. The reason why I bought this power station is that I wanted a battery backup to keep my modem the ONT in my garage and my Google Wi-Fi powered if we ever have a major outage, uh, major power outage, like we had um, back in December whenever, or back in the beginning of January when all the internet, uh, when all the electricity went down, we had to boil our water. Um, that way so I can have internet which, which travels separately than the power lines do over fiber optics. Um, my internet would have stayed up during the whole duration of the outage had I had this little guy as my modem only consumes 9 watts, which means I theoretically could have had about 33 hours of non-stop internet usage had I had this power station. Uh, now let's get on to the review. Uh, full disclaimer, I am not your Marquez Brownlee or Unbox Therapy, so you're just getting my perspective of this power station as I see it and the features that it offers. All right. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the unboxing. Adventuring Arts Product Reviews. All right, let's open this bad boy up. All right, close this guy up here so I don't end up slicing off a finger. Open up here. All right, so I just opened up the box, and as you can see down here, we've got some of the bubble wrap. I'll go ahead and get this out here, and then look nicely seated in here is the Go Labs R300 portable power station, 300 watt hour. It's good for devices, outdoor emergency. It also shows here that um, looks like we got two of them there. I like a the little uh, kind of that's kind of what I want to be out there. I want to be out on the mountain there camping with my Go Lab. Uh, portable power station. All right, I went ahead and stood the box up here, as you can tell. Here's what the box looks like from the outside. It's got a good tape seal. I notice the boxing is uh, pretty sturdy. I don't see anything wrong with it. Here's a little bit of the uh, product information and the product facts for you to, for you, those of you who care about that information. You can ch charge a drone 13 hours, a laptop five, uh, 24 charges of a smartphone. So you got pr plenty of battery life, and this again is using the lithium um, iron phosphate battery. So you get the 2,000 charges at least, and that 2,000 will get you down to 80%. So that's not the end of the battery at 2,000. That's when you start to notice some degradation. So this should last you more than 10 plus years with just average moderate use. All right, here's a little bit about the battery. You can tell it's a life PO4 battery. 299 watt hour that's how much you can uh, store in it and then the rated output is 300 watts it does have a surge capacity of a little bit more than that so you can you, you can I believe you can go slightly above that without tripping the breaker but we'll test that out here later on it's got one USB one one USB two and let's see uh, it looks like it's got a 10 amp 12 volt uh, DC output and it does have a USB type C out connector as well which uh, can uh, output up to 60 watts, which you can charge, which is like your mostly like your MacBook Pro and whatnot. And it does has an AC output, which is just your standard wall outlet at 300 watts. All right, so I'm, as I'm opening it up here, first time taking it out of the box. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Go Labs. Well, I don't know what the surprise is. Don't hesitate to email us and claim your free gift. Wonder what that gift could be. I need to get my surprise user manual. All right, it's a pretty uh, decent sized user manual here. Uh, it's got um, all the text and specs and dimensions. I love reading this information, so I'll read that at a later time. You've got some good boxes. I'm sure these are power bricks or cables. And we'll set them aside for right now. And look at that foam. Man, that is thick. 
and I can see it at the bottom here. So I can't pull it out here with just one hand. Maybe I can? I did. Look at that. Let me set this thing to the side here. Got it. All right. So I'm going to slide that there. We'll do this guy like this. Set that to the side. Take this plastic sheeting off. And there you have it in all of its glory. I'm going to get rid of some of my mess here. All right, look at that guy. Cool. Man, this is neat. So you got your power on. I haven't pushed it in yet. DC on, your USB power, AC power, your power outlets, your USB power, your USB-C. Um, you got 12 volt as well. And here's your input for the power, just your standard brick. So you can, looks like you can output also to 12 volt as well. On the side, you've got a fan, I'm assuming so that it can cool the battery or the unit off and inside while it's running. And on this side, you've got a lovely little light, which didn't turn on because I probably have to turn the unit on first. And on this side, another fan, which is what we just looked at. And then back to the front. Um, let's take a look at the top. Very, very nice. Very nice. And let's look underneath. All right. We need those uh, warnings there. Don't overcharge the internal battery. Please follow the manual. Don't smoke, strike a match. You don't want to smoke on it. Don't smoke it. It's not smokable. And um, only charge the internal battery in a well-ventilated area. All right. Let's go ahead and fire it up. I just pushed it once. Does that do anything? What if I push and hold? Aha! comes up with 86% battery right out of the factory. So it's got plenty of a charge. Says I can use 99 hours at my current rate of consumption, zero watts. Now, if I were to turn on the AC power, it's kicking on the inverter. Notice my watts immediately go down even though I'm not drawing anything, but it just kind of gives you an idea. Uh, just leaving that on, it will reduce your battery time to, what's this, 20, maybe 19, 18 hours. All right, so just having the AC power adapter on does drop some of the battery percentage and drops the hours of use that you can use. Now, I haven't done any type of charging. Obviously, I just took this out of the box, so once I charge it up, I'm, that may vary or, or change. Your mileage may, may vary. All right, so now we've got the unit. We've got some information about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else in that they send us. I'm assuming this is going to be the power brick. Those look like my cables. All right, set these guys. Oh, throwing stuff. Uh, so you got your 12 volt, 12 volt car charger adapter. So this would plug in one of these guys here to give you an additional 12 volt outlet. Uh, you've got your standard 110 wall outlet, which would be your input. That's where you're gonna plug that in on the input. You've got your solar. This will plug into a solar panel, your standard MC4 connectors, and that would go into the input as well. That's where you plug in the input. And you have a car charger that would plug into your 12 volt in your car and then plug that into the input as well. So there you have it, folks. You've got all the cables and accessories that you would really ever want with a power station. Uh, overall, first impressions, super impressed. Really like it, and uh, I like the, the general look and feel. So I noticed that it went down to 67 from 88. So I'm assuming that that initial charge is just, it may say higher and then it equalized after it's powered on. So it's probably around mid 60s, where it's truly at, once I power it up, we'll truly know, uh, you know, what 100% looks like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged in and we'll get it charged up. And uh, we'll definitely take a look to see how well it's charging, how fast it's charging, what's the input watts, and uh, then we'll do some testing and see how the output watts work as well. So I have it plugged in here, just my regular 110 outlet. Uh, I've got it plugged into a power strip, which you can't really see right here on, I've got it plugged into a power strip. Um, it's get, pulling in 45 watts at this point. It says we're at about 46%. 
and uh, you know looking here at the panel it's got a nice really clean clear display I really like the uh, the look to it um, but I do believe it does support pass-through charging while you're using it so if you do turn the AC power on it's going to tell you that even then even with AC power on it drops the total watts of what it's receiving because the, just to power up the inverter it does require a certain amount of uh, electricity so just keep that in mind so if I'm powering something under 30 watts, it may have like a net neutral charge. So in other words, if I power up my modem, which uses about eight or nine watts, um, and then another thing, which is about 10 watts, as long as I don't go over 36 uh, watts, I should be gaining power. It should be growing. Now, uh, that's with the AC inverter on. <laughs> so if, if I'm pulling electricity out of these plugs, or if I, got a, if I have a phone, so if I switch that over, go to USB, plug in a phone, as long as I'm not going over what is it, 44 watts uh, out of all these USB ports that are right here, then uh, I should be good to go. But just keep that in mind. Um, and neat little things is like, when, as you turn these on, you get these little indicators on the display and it may be a little difficult to see. Uh, if I adjust the contrast a little bit, you can see a little bit better. Here, let's set it right about there. Um, so, let's see. So as you can see, if I turn the DC power on, it's a little indicator goes away. USB power on, the indicator goes away, and then AC power on, the AC. So you can have all three of these guys charging all at the same time. But bear in mind that your wattage availability is going to drop the more of these devices that you have enabled. Uh, if you just leave it like it is and don't need it as a as like sort of a UPS or a surge protector, then yeah, just leave it as is. You don't have to. Uh, turn these units on just let it charge at its max capacity um, i'm assuming right now it says it's at 47 percent so it's going to take several hours to fill up what would be nice uh go labs is if you could give me a time indicator here of time to charge how long this is going to take it to fill up at my current input wattage amount so that would be probably my only suggestion uh, i did want to show one more thing as we flip around so the unit is on as i flip around here i wanted to show the light Ooh, it's bright. Let me go dark. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my phone here to like a brighter brightness so you can kind of get an idea of how bright that is. So you can definitely tell that's bright. Uh, it lights up, it kind of lights up the room. So if I pan over here to my wall, you can see the shadow that is casting on this wall here um, based off of that light. But, This is a little heater that I use. Um, it uses around 200 to 250 watts, and this is rated at 300. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Uh, I've turned on the AC power to see how long it will last and see if we can get some heat coming out of this that we got here, my heat. That's a good sign it turned on. Now it jumped up to 300 watts. Now it's kind of leveling off. Down to 200. Should be right around 200. Where's it? Ooh, there's hot air coming out of there. I don't know if you can hear it. Here's my endometer. And this is going to tell us how much wind is coming out of here and the temperature. So look at the heat going up. So it's putting out about two miles an hour of wind. A little over 80 degrees is coming out of that unit. Maybe 81, 82. Let me get it right next to it. Really. Yeah, it's it's toast to 84, 85, 88, 90, 91. Woo! Look at that. We're gonna hit 100 degrees here. You think we can get there? What do you guys think? Ooh, my hands are toasty. Anyways, yikes. And uh, this did not power off, by the way. It's just this screen goes dormant after a little while. But there you have it. So you can definitely run a small space heater, a very small portable one. <laughs> I'll eventually do a review on this guy here, but I just wanted to at least show, show you that this unit does power a small unit and it looks like it'll go probably, so at 300 watts and I'm using about 190. So I should be able to get at least an hour and a half of nice warmth here, heating up my little office that I'm in. Um, heating up my office that I'm in, right? So, just figured I'd share that with you, and here, this is just a quick 
low test, capacity test, and it passed fine flying colors. All right, I decided to do one more test. I plugged in a second AC outlet. You see I'm generating 196 watts. Um, this is powering my Alpacool cooler, which is right now at minus one. I'm gonna cool it off a little more to see if I can get it to kick on 195. I'm just gonna turn down the temperature on both of these sides here to see if we can get it to kick on. This is sort of like a stress test here. Okay, negative four is about as low as I can get it to go. 196, 192. I'm just waiting to see if the compressor kicks on. 100 watts. Okay, I'm gonna try it. My I have a Kululi mini fridge here. I'm gonna try this one out. Let's see if we can get it to. This one requires a lot more electricity than the Alba Cool. Let's check try this one out. Yeah, 210. All right, and I'm gonna set it 36 degrees. So yeah, it immediately spiked up as soon as I plugged it in, but. It's definitely able to run both of them. I mean, you see that it, the percentage is dropping down some, but it's, um, I can hear the fan on the Kululi running. Um, if I turn the heater off, so it's only using about 17 watts right now. But if I, let's see, I'm gonna turn temperature down on the Kululi. You see the watts are around 60, 70, 72, 70. I know it uses about 100. To do is turn this guy back on now. 362. Oh, it aired out. There you have it. <laughs> All right, so once this guy was running first, because this has an initial pull that's really large, so I can, I can basically pull this guy out, turn him back on. Let me turn on the AC power. There it goes. 252, 316. As long as it's running, it's fine. But if I plug in the Kululi now, now that we're in the 100s, so it's gonna jump up. It's gonna get up there like around 250, 260, but it is, um, I look at the units, which is right over here, 38 degrees. It's using about 214, but I hear the fan. It is running, cooling off that guy over here. I just said it's a 30, 31. There you have it. So that's, that's what happens if you overload it and it turns right back on by just pressing the AC back on and off again. All right, so I charged up the unit after it had arrived. Uh, when it initially arrived, I had a battery level of about 88%. However, within a minute or two after starting it up, I, I noticed it quickly dropped to about 55%-ish or or so basically so what my theory is is that the power station has been idle for a while so it needed an equalization charge to top it off uh, i then went ahead and charged it for i left it about four about three and a half hours from and it went from 50 percent all the way to 100 percent the last 10 percent i noticed that the inbound charging wattage drops significantly from about 45 watts in to a slow 11 watts on ac 110 power However, it didn't really stay long uh, at this level and it jumped up to about 100% state of charge. Once it fully topped off, I brought it outside and I hooked it up to a TV for around five hours and it ended up with around 70% after watching TV. My TV is a 40 inch smart TV, so I had YouTube streaming on it the whole time. Now, why did I have my TV outside, you might ask? Well, we were celebrating a per person's birthday party and I had some uh, videos playing so they basically could hear some birthday music playing and some really cool scenes with balloons and things like that so I was celebrating that person it was a little bit of a birthday party as you can tell from some of my screenshots or some of my video clips that I've thrown up here on the screen 
In my opinion, it was a pretty impre it was pretty impressive uh, that it only went down about 30% after that time frame. Also felt that it had a lot to do with the wattage it's rated at, so it's rated at about 299 watt hours. All right, so uh, let's talk about the specs. The power station has Life PO4 batteries. That stands for lithium iron phosphate. Uh, they rate it at about 2,000 cycles of life, and which is more, which should get you more than 10 years of battery health, which is incredible compared to a meager like 500 cycles you'll get out of a traditional uh, lithium ion battery. Uh, having said that, this battery should last me a long time. It also has two 60 watt USB-C ports that feature and support one of them which supports inbound and outbound power out of one of the USB-C ports. Uh, the default wall charger will only going to get you about 45 watts in versus the 60 watts you can get from a USB-C port. But please note that you would have to supply your own USB-C power supply to take full advantage of the 60 watts or just stick with the default charger which is going to max you, around, max, you, max you out around 45 watts. That'll take you about seven hours from fully dead to fully charged uh, with the default charger. There are also two USB 3.0 charging ports. There are also two 12 volt barrel plugs and one 12 volt car charging port. Then of course you have the two 110 AC ports, which is like your home plugs that you'd have in the house that support up to 300 watts max using the pure sine wave inverter. It also has this really cool, fancy, schmancy light in the back that lights up a tent quite nicely. As far as cables, it does come with one AC wall charger, one 12 volt, 12 volt car, car charger, one MC4 solar panel charging cable, and an extra 12 volt adapter so you can plug in essentially two 12 volt cigarette lighter style adapters. I tested the solar panel I have uh, for my Blue, Blue Eddy uh, AC200P. Uh, it did throw me an error code, uh, but it did continue to charge the unit on a cloudy day. So my guess is that the error code was telling me that it was like doing some sort of throttling of the wattage or the voltage to just, to just protect the battery. So it kind of worked, uh, but it was charging at about 15 watts on a completely clouded day with this 120 watt panel. So who knows? It could be, you know, I haven't really had a chance to test it out in full sunlight, but we'll see. As far as warranty, Go Labs do back their product with a full one year warranty and 24 hours of support if you ever have problems with it. Now let's talk about purchasing it. I bought mine on Amazon and it actually arrived the very next day, which I found phenomenal. Uh, my Blue Eddy took m well over more than a week to get here. Uh, the price currently as of March 13th, I'm seeing it on sale for about $2.99 with an additional available $80 coupon which will bring it just uh, barely over $200. There is a link in the description of this video that will take you straight over to Amazon to this product. Uh, also please note that I am not affiliated with GoLabs and I paid for this power station out of my good hard earned money. Uh, I'm simply just a guy that wanted to share a cool product and um, I thought you might find it useful, helpful and you'll um, maybe be able to use it if you decide to purchase one yourself. All right, well in conclusion, um, that's the review of the new GoLabs R300 uh, with the Life PO4 battery lithium iron phosphate that should last me for years and years of adventuring out in the wild. Um, so I do appreciate you taking the time to, to watch this little review. Uh, again, this is Adventuring Art. I appreciate you tuning in and be sure if you like this video, give it a, a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more reviews or you can also check out these videos over here uh, or over here depending on where they show up where you can see some of my other adventures that I've been on or product reviews as well. So again this is Adventuring Art signing off and we will see you on the next adventure. Later folks.